Community Forum is sponsored by the Easton Grange 196 and a friend of Yardley Wood Rink and the Easton Lions Club. There's a storm across the valley The clouds are rolling in The afternoon is heavy on your shoulders There's a truck out on the four lane A mile or more away The whining of his wheels just makes it colder. Welcome to Community Forum. Today is November 15th, 2023, and I have a very interesting and uh, intriguing uh, guest today. I'm intrigued, I'm interested, and I hope you will be too. Her name is Karen Miranda. She is a medium and she is a uh, spiritual artist. Is mm -hmm. that right? Yes, I am a spirit artist. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Karen, tell me a little bit about your background. Uh, tell me uh, how how early it was that you knew that you were uh, able to communicate with spirits. I didn't know. That's the thing. I didn't know until I was twelve years old, mm -hmm. and I was at my. I know I'd mentioned this on another, my other shows. To my, I went up to pay my respects to my uncles casket and you know said some prayers and all of a sudden i just started hearing in my head i'm okay my heart's fine and i'm not sore anymore my death was fast so i saw my aunts over there crying and he said go tell your aunts to stop crying i'm not in any more pain so what i did was i got done and i went over to them and i looked at the two of them, and I said, you need to stop crying. And they looked at me. My uncle's telling me to tell you to not be sad about his passing, but to be happy he's not in any more pain. And and he his heart isn't sore anymore. <coughs> and they just both looked at me because I was only like 12 years old at the time. And they said, oh my goodness. And when they did that, I said, his heart isn't sore, so he wanted me to tell you. And when they heard that, they wiped the tears away and they got some form of healing. And they said, you have no way of knowing how he passed because he had a heart attack behind the wheel of the car mm -hmm. and that he passed away. Well, what a story. Yeah. What a story, my goodness. And uh, so what did that lead you to do when that um, event happened and you knew that you were um, uh, able to uh, receive messages mm -hmm. from the dead? Not right away, because mm -hmm. years later, I kind of like had things happen to me on and off, like as a teenager, mm -hmm. of knowing that somebody was, felt like somebody was gonna pass away, mm -hmm. and I would tell somebody in the family, and sure enough, the phone would ring, and some, I said, somebody's gonna die, so sure enough, the phone would ring the next day, somebody had passed away, and that's, one of the things, and then later on in my older years, when I was uh, married and after giving birth to my daughter, Michelle, something happened. I was diagnosed with having multiple sclerosis. So something shifted everything and with the mediumship, because I used to sing at Our Lady a Good Council Choir in Quincy, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. and. What it was happening was is I started giving messages to everybody in the choir, and they said, those are all wonderful, Karen, but there's only one thing. And I said, what's that? They said, those are from our relatives that passed away. And I said, oh, I didn't mean to upset anybody, but they know they were getting a healing out of the messages that I was giving them mm -hmm. because they made sense. So I, you know, thanked God and everything like that. And... I said, there's something more seriously wrong with me than having multiple sclerosis. <laughs> <laughs> and I, um, <clears throat> that happened. And so I, you know, had to learn to accept my gift and mm -hmm. let, it, let it take its process. And I was led to a, a, the Spiritist Church in Quincy, which I know everybody from watching my show had heard that before and during my show, and where I had to learn to control everything 
that was going on with me was seeing, hearing, and feeling. I'm more of a clear sentient medium, which is somebody who feels the presence of spirits around them, mm -hmm. and that's how they give the messages and they let me feel how they passed. Mm -hmm. And a spirit artist, which is somebody that can draw people that have passed away on paper. But when I was led to the Spiritist Church in Quincy, I was very happy because I learned I wasn't alone. And it was a wonderful feeling because I, ha I had gone to my parish priest about what was going on with me. He, he thought I was a little kooky, <laughs> you know, and things like that, which I can understand that too. And But I said, I need to go to somebody who knew, who knew me as a priest. And there was, there was somebody I could go to. I've known him since I was like 18 years old. He said, that's a gift you have. Learn to accept it and embrace it. It's now, what, what kind of a church was this? It was a um, spiritual church where everybody has gifts in their own way where we could learn. Oh. They have services there, you know, f with the medium that goes on the platform uh -huh. that can deliver messages <clears throat> from your relatives and mm -hmm. deceased family and friends. <clears throat> I see. Okay. And what's the name of this church? Or do you have to be a, a spiritual... Huh? Do you have to be a spiritual uh, artist or a medium to go to the church? No, you don't have to be. <clears throat> all are welcome, you know, and stuff like that. So it's really nice, and they're very welcoming, welcoming, mm -hmm. and it's nice to know that you're not alone yes. with your gifts. That there are other people there yeah, like is, you. Is the church connected with any church? Um, no. It, it, well, it's connected with other spiritual churches. Oh, in Massachusetts and throughout. Mm -hmm. well, I never heard of a uh, spiritual church. A spiritual church? Yeah, I've never heard of that. Yeah. So where is this one located in Quincy? Um, it's on Body West Street. It's located Body West Street in Quincy, the western part of the West West Quincy. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, so what? Now you have a program on this channel on ECAT. Mm -hmm. And w what's the name of it? It's called Whispers from the Other Side. Whispers from the Other Side. Mm -hmm. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. And. Uh, how does that work? Uh, do you uh, sit in the podcast room and do, do that's, things by Zoom? That works where I have get phone like phone calls from people when they do call. Mm -hmm. They um, I'll deliver messages over the phone to them, mm -hmm. and I have guests on. And if the phone doesn't ring, which has happened, I will talk and share you know different experience I've had so that way people know that they don't have to go to a church but they can get the information mm -hmm. that I share with them so, uh, so tell me uh, uh, what's the phone number and what times should people be calling you people should be calling me at um, seven o'clock because we switched back to prime time I have a show this coming Monday but I'm not doing a phone because it's gonna be live guests in the studio okay and all are welcome to come on if they want to come on the show. So tell me, uh, is it? Do you have a regular seven o'clock show every month? Yes, I do. And what uh, what day in, of the month is that? Huh? What day is of the month is that? Oh, it's on a Monday. And is it the second Monday, the third? It depends on the schedule here at ECAT, you know, and stuff like that. So okay, I how do people know? Um, well, they can they, they can, can see usually. You look at the They'll calendar. They'll put a graphic up to when I do a show, so mm -hmm. that way people will see the graphic go up with the information of it's going to be on this day okay. and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So that okay. way they know that the information is there ahead of time. Mm. Good. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, uh, this has been a blessing in your life, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. It's been, a, it's been mm -hmm. a very good blessing. It's not about me. It's about me delivering messages from people, whether they're looking for foreclosure or healing in a message. It's whatever you're looking for in your reading. Now, tell me, is, are there times when you get no messages from when somebody comes to you? Huh? Is, is it, do you ever have no messages when somebody comes to you? No, I usually have messages for people. Mm -hmm. I've been very blessed that way. Mm -hmm. And I've been very blessed with information that they give me. And that's where the trust had to come in with me mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. I do this work, you know, and things like that. And that's how it is with me. Mm -hmm. So, so um, now I, I've been to a Maureen Hancock uh, show, for mm -hmm. example. Have you ever thought about doing uh, your own show, having the public come? I, um, what I have done in the past is I've done, I did a lot of volunteer stuff mm -hmm. where I've done things for cancer with, um, with my friend at Patricia and Company mm -hmm. in Weymouth. I don't know if she's still there or not. 
and I've, I've given through the spiritual churches by going on the platform, delivering messages to the congregation. It's like a Catholic church in some ways where the priest goes up and gives a lecture and everything like that. Mm -hmm. but, but instead of having a Catholic priest, they have the reverend there. So that's how I have given, you know, mm -hmm. shared my gifts with people. But you haven't decided to go commercial. Not yet. I'm just, you know, I just, to me, I don't, I haven't decided to do that. Okay. I just trust in faith in God and wherever mm -hmm. the gifts lead me is where mm -hmm. I'm supposed to be. Well, you ought to think about that because you could certainly reach a wider audience, mm -hmm. couldn't you? You could oh, reach yes. a wider audience if you if you went, had some public uh, presentations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, once and in I, a while. Yeah, and I would and I would like to do that, it, you mm -hmm. know, and stuff like that because I I know like for myself I have tried to fluff it off, and I've tried mm -hmm. I haven't I gave it up in 2018 and just like said I'm done. I, I walked away from it, but something always pulls me back mm -hmm. to back mm -hmm. into the loop. And that's where the spirit at started coming in to play with all of the mediumship stuff too. So mm -hmm. it's it's a gift. It's a gift. Yeah. And so you're sharing that gift mm -hmm. with uh, lots of people. And what has their response been? I'm sorry. What, what? has their reaction been? They're the like, you had no way of knowing that because I had a very good teacher that taught me to get that special piece of evidence when you're delivering the message to the person that's getting the reading. And what they do with me is I'll get the description of the person. They'll mm -hmm. share their lives with me, but it's that special piece of evidence mm -hmm. that I get for the um, people when they come for readings that hits close to home. I see. So you need to receive some information about the one who has passed. Mm -hmm. And I usually don't even have to try. Usually it just comes in, you know, with um, all the information that they want. And sometimes a person might come to me for a reading, especially when they come on the show. And I tell people, I forgot my last show, but I tell people sometimes you have to become the medium because sometimes it might not make any sense at all. That's just very rare. Mm -hmm. And then they have to go and deliver the messages themselves and they usually will get back to me and say this is the, you know wow so you have met future mediums mm -hmm. yes okay so tell me about how this children's book uh journey with the animals how did that uh originate what have i when i got divorced in 2018 i had rented a house down in plymouth massachusetts and it was winter time and I was dabbling more with the, you know, withdrawing and stuff like that. So all of a sudden I just got cheap paper, like all artists do. And I just started drawing at the table. And I said, you know what? The, the, the polar bear came on the paper. Just, I didn't even have to really try. It was fun doing them. And I said, you know, I'm going to draw some more animals and bring some happiness into the into people's lives too mm -hmm. and because kids love to touch and i said and so it went from drawing one animal to another animal mm -hmm. and and it just it made the winter go by really fast and before you know it mm -hmm. the drawings were on the yeah okay so i'm gonna um open it up to uh okay so here is the first one is the seahorse and it says, the seahorse is enjoying a nice swim while looking for breakfast for his family. And what I like about this is the large font. And children, young children, feel very comfortable with large letters. So uh, I think that's very, a very good part of the uh, feature of the book. And, um, and then you have the dolphins are happily playing under the sea among other sea creatures. Uh, a baby elephant walks behind while holding his mother's tail to keep up with the group. All right. And these, apparently, these are done with um, crayon, right? <laughs> They're drawn with pencil. <laughs> the owl and pencil. So the owl and owlet wait patiently under the crescent moon. Um, so it goes on and on. And um, so you have the mouse, the squirrel, rabbits, caterpillars, lion, eagle, 
butterflies, mm -hmm. the cats, turtles. Uh, it was a very busy winter. <laughs> yes, the fox. I like that. The fox is hiding. Um, and it's hiding in the garden, hidden by the sunflowers. Uh, okay, and then I think there's the polar bear here, too. There is a polar bear. It's yeah. about an iceberg. Okay. Mm. And, uh, and oh, because there he is. Yes. There's the polar bear. So it's a baby polar bear. Mm -hmm. Baby polar bear. And it says the polar bear rests on an iceberg. Its white fur blends in with the snow. So Journey with the Animals by Karen Miranda. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so that's been um, one of your side talents, mm -hmm. shall we say, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, and are you planning on doing, uh, making more books? Uh -huh. Are you planning on creating more books? Yes, I am. I actually have one that I am rewriting with a friend. Mm -hmm. I pulled from the shelves. It's it's called Heaven Needs Me More, debating whether I want to keep the title that's on a rewrite. What's the name of the title? Um, it's, it's called Heaven Needs Me More, <clears throat> and it's on a rewrite now because I didn't like the way all the grammar was on it, so <clears throat> I pulled it from the shelves and we're redoing it and putting it on Amazon where it will be available, where that book is available to <clears throat> order. And I also have my autobiography going. I see. Yeah. Oh, well, that'll be interesting. Mm -hmm. So if... Uh, the grandparents out there, if you want to order this book for your grandkids, uh, it's called Journey with the Animals by Karen Miranda. Uh, and you can get that on Facebook. Uh, no, oh, no, on, on, on Amazon. Amazon. You, on Amazon. You go to Amazon, mm -hmm. then you type in my name, and then the book should be right there. Terrific. Yeah. Oh, well, that's easy. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, tell me, uh, your what has been one of the most interesting programs that that you didn't see coming the most interesting one yes <clears throat> the um actually the last show i did really yeah was one of the most interesting ones because i never know what spirit's gonna say mm -hmm. and there was a specific piece of information that came out where the person was like wow and I had no way of knowing. Mm -hmm. And then they had a drawing that made sense with them too. And then I did a drawing for them too. I see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's always, uh, I imagine, amazing when you uh, surprise somebody because, you, as you say, you have no way of knowing. No, no. And, I, and I used to have a no graphic, which I did had them to put up when I do my show here. Please don't give me any information because that's how I was trained. Because if you, I've seen so many mediums go up and the person in the congregation starts asking them questions, then they get the information too that way. I see. So that's mm -hmm. why I don't like to know anything. So you'll hear me say a lot, please don't give me any information. So that way I don't know. Okay, so you don't ask for information about the one who's passed? Nope. Oh, I thought you did. I thought you got bits of information. No, you just uh, experience yeah, the spirit it, coming through you. It just comes through me to, you know, I never know what's coming in my, through my mouth, you know what I'm saying, and out this way. So that's where, that's where I had to trust the spirits, where, you know, it's from a good place, of course, mm -hmm. and trust what they've given me to give to the person that's mm -hmm. getting the reading. Mm -hmm. And then the same thing with the art. So it's like the same thing with the art where I said I had to trust, okay, if you guys want me to do this, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And things like that. So so you're talking about drawing a picture of the uh, member of somebody's family who's died. Mm -hmm. And um, and so have you, when you've done that, how, what has the reaction been? They say, they're, my very, goodness, they're very surprised. They're, that's the likeness of the person. Mm -hmm. They are very, very surprised at, at that. And I don't know because I don't, People don't always want to share that, you know, the pictures with me, mm -hmm. but they recognize the person right away. And mm -hmm. the last couple of drawings I have done, people have sent me the photos of the person next to them. Mm -hmm. And I just said, wow, it, you know, that's what I know. It's a gift. Mm -hmm. It's a gift not about mm -hmm. me. Right. It's a gift that I have to share with others. Now, you have, um, you have two children or one? Huh? Uh, how many children do you have? I have three. 
Three. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. And has any one of those received the gift? Two of them. Really? Yep. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And my my daughter, Michelle, hi, she's in the studio somewhere <laughs> using up all their rink, downloading uh -huh. stuff, but she is very intuitive to spirits too. Mm -hmm. So you, you, if you have the gift, it's most likely you inherited it from somebody or you went through a trauma or something like that to mm -hmm. have mm -hmm. it enhanced. Okay. So, because I hear very often that uh, children of a medium also get the gift. Oh, yes, and they're wonderful. And I've said it on my show a, a while back. Children are wonderful mm -hmm. little mediums. So if they come over to you and say, there's so-and-so here pouring a cup of tea from the favorite tea cup, you know, with the roses on it or something like that, do pay attention, you know, and stuff like that. And, mm -hmm. you know, let them know that they're okay. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So... But do pay attention because mm -hmm. sometimes they have messages that it'll totally blow you away. Yes, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure they do. Um, I have a friend who um, was skeptical and uh, was at a, a program and then she was almost going to walk out and all of a sudden um, the medium, medium uh, shouted out words that the, was the message mm -hmm. and she recognized that it was uh, the name of uh, sort of a, a funny name that that one a person who had passed called mm -hmm. her, herself, and um, it was it was and it rhymed, and nobody could have ever come up with that ever. Yeah, and that got her attention. So, um, yeah, it's such an interesting world, and you know we don't recognize that world. No, no, and and or give credence to it. Um, but I think there are more people who are interested in that, and and if they see mm -hmm. these uh, results, and it's the proof. It's the proof right. that from the special piece of validation, which the Reverend did say, get that special piece of evidence, mm -hmm. and it's the proof that she got from him to do the wow moment. You know, like us mediums say, that's the wow moment. You know, mm -hmm. that you get, mm -hmm. which is. So when you have these services on Sunday, is it on a Sunday? Huh? Do you have ser uh, services on a Sunday? I don't. I haven't done any, but they usually have them Sunday at eleven o'clock. Mm -hmm. Okay. At the Spurgeon Church. And what has there been any phenomenal um, things that have happened during the, those services? Have you just have you found that there are some surprising moments at the oh, church? Oh, in a service? service? Yes. Um, there was one that I was down in the onset, Massachusetts, where I was doing a service with, with somebody, and the church was packed. It was totally packed. And mm -hmm. she was getting the information, and sometimes I'll, I'll see spirits transform through people, like Whoopi Goldberg and the movie, in the show movie Ghost. Those are real. And all of a sudden, I was looking at her, and her hair got really messy, and sometimes, it might seem frugal to you, but the person getting the message, it could be the biggest validation. All of a sudden, her hair was very, very messy. And the message was from her loved one. She said, my hair is neater than yours. And just to say that, she like roared and laughed. And she said, that's how so-and-so would say it to me. So, so the spirits that you encounter are really in the room. Mm -hmm. And they really see the people who are in the room with you. Yes, they they, they do. And mm -hmm. sometimes with me too, like it's like the energy too, because mm -hmm. I'll see energy is like of lights out of my head and different things like that. And sometimes they'll mm -hmm. deliver messages that way. And they really are in the room. So, um, is this a uh, a very is it very tiring for you? Do you get fatigued after these sessions? No, I'm very mm -hmm. energetic actually, and, and knowing that. So it's people were happy, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. About, know, that the loved one is not alone or something right. like that. It's very energetic for me. Mm -hmm. I do have to ask them to back off, though, and people will hear me say that on my show, too. <laughs> really? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> In other words, you have enough and let somebody else come through. Yes. Okay. And finally, uh, you have a special concern uh, about uh, suicide. And yes. I want you to talk about that. I get a lot of suicide 
spirits that have crossed over. And there's a group that my daughter likes, and younger people might know them, Shine Down, they're called. With the holidays coming up, this is a big time of the year sometimes for suicide, where people get lonely, depressed, and feel like there's no way out. But there is help. There's help you can get. It's called you're not alone dot dot org. What's it called? It's called you're not alone dot org, <clears throat> where you can call and somebody you know you can talk to somebody, and just you know know that you're not alone. So it's you're not alone, or you are not alone. You there's someone you with someone you can go to. No have, no no no. I mean the website. Oh, you're not alone is the website. You're not alone dot org. So it's y o u apostrophe r e. N O T A L O N E. Yeah, the graphic will be up. With it. It's like you're not alone. Dot uh org. -huh. So it's it's nice because you know you you do some people like especially if you lose somebody you know and sometimes you get depressed. How can I go on without them? And people do get suicidal thoughts, mm -hmm. you know, and stuff like that. But there is there is help, and this year the holidays coming up, and all the mm -hmm. time, but. It's nice to know that there is someone you can call <clears throat> to talk to. to if you can. And I think there's uh, been a phone, uh, 988, I think, has been dedicated to um, people who need, uh, it's a suicide helpline. Mm -hmm. So I, I believe, I'm, I, can, I may stand corrected, but I think it is 988. Yeah, and that's good to know, too. And it's nice mm -hmm. to have the resources and, you know, it's nice to know that there is somebody there that you can talk to, mm -hmm. you know, if you really mm -hmm. need help. It's out there. The resources are there. It, right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what are your plans for the future? My plans for the future mm -hmm. is to hopefully get my name out there so I could do more charity work for cancer and things like that. And whatever mm -hmm. destiny leads me mm -hmm. to go to is where I'm, you know, supposed to be as a medium, you know. Yeah. Well, Karen, thank you so much for joining me today on Community Forum. Uh, and I know the audience has learned something and certainly I appreciate your genuine concern for uh, people and your willingness to uh, share your gift with uh, people and you sharing your gift here with us today. Um, and so uh, hopefully those viewers out there uh, Please uh, tune in on the Monday at 7 p.m. <clears throat> Look at the ECAT community calendar to see when Karen Miranda's uh, whispers from the other side are, are on the uh, schedule and uh, whether or not, uh, and, and check in. Now, all of our programs go on YouTube mm -hmm. and they're also accessible through your computer at eastoncat.org. So there are many ways for you to connect with Karen. So I hope you do. And you might be really surprised and very happy. So thank you so much, Karen, for thank being here. Thank you very us. much, Priscilla, too. And Priscilla's show is great, too. So don't forget to tune into her <laughs> show, too, as well. But thank you very, very much for thank having you. me on. You're very welcome. Thank you so much. And until next time, this is Priscilla Alm Christelson. Be well. And be kind to each other, too. Yes. Community Forum is sponsored by the Easton Grange 196 and a friend of Yardley Wood Rink and the Easton Lions Club.